Welcome back. On today's show, I'm a legal alien. We've discussed attitudes and treatment of foreign nationals in the UK. Now, joining us to shed some light on the law is immigration expert Dr. Luzini Navasaldian. Welcome to the studio. Now, Dr. Luzini, what inspired you to become a doctor of law? I think the question is what inspired me to become a lawyer because becoming a doctor of law was just a, a consequence. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a consequence. It was a natural progression in uh, the career. Mm -hmm. um, becoming a lawyer, um, I think that was the fact I was born in Soviet Union, mm -hmm. a country where human dignity and human laws aren't really a thing, well, weren't really a thing, thankfully. It mm -hmm. does not exist anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was. Um, eight years uh, old when the process of uh, uh, demolition of that structure started and that's uh, th that was when I understood very clearly that the law is the only way that a society can function properly mm -hmm. where humans are given dignity mm -hmm. and are offered the opportunity to achieve their uh, potential mm -hmm. and I thought that it, uh, as a way of uh, being part of that is to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So I've wanted to become a lawyer ever since. Wonderful. Now, we couldn't come to a consensus of what immigration is. How would you describe immigration according to the law? What is immigration? Uh, immigration, well, there isn't a definition of immigration, but there is a definition of immigrant, mm -hmm. uh, to say. Immigrant is a person who is subject to... Uh, uh, regulations uh, and limitations to enter and live in a country. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if we are speaking about immigrant, this is a person, not a person who's born outside of the UK, but uh, a person who is yet under such uh, regulations and limitations. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why there is a difference between uh, the amount of people who are foreign, foreign born, who by the time that uh, the census is being done, might already be British, mm -hmm. but they're not immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are the real immigrants who still are under this kind of uh, limitations and uh, under immigration controls, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people who kind of like need a visa or permission to exactly. remain in the UK. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And that's interesting because that goes to perception and even the media's perception, yes. uh, you know, because, for example, somebody who is not under those regulations, they probably won't even, there's some of it, and I said to my, my co-presenter during the break, I wonder how many people living in the UK would consider themselves an immigrant, yeah. even yeah. though they may not be under those regulations. Exactly. Mm. Because usually what you hear is anybody coming from another country, or sometimes it's someone with a different accent, or, or a different di colour, yeah. different yeah. colour, yeah. or a different culture, yeah. anything different. Born immigrant. in another country. Because yeah. by definition, I'm no longer an immigrant because right. I'm a right. British citizen, but I still consider myself, in my mind, an immigrant. <laughs> And because I was born in South Africa. Exactly, <laughs> and hence why we thought, oh, 40%, 50%, yeah. etc. No, but the percentage quoted, I'm yeah. sure this 14% are actually the um, people who are born outside of the UK. Mm -hmm. the, if I'm not mistaken, the actual immigration population is about 8 to 9%. So even lower. Mm -hmm. So it's even lower. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. lower. Yeah. Well, speaking of media perception, something we heard in the media all last year was... Brexit. So this term that the media coined, right? So I want to find out, in terms of Brexit, we are going to leave the European Union. How will it affect it's Europeans like. living in the UK? Oh, well, that's a difficult question in the sense that uh, not even the government yet knows what they are going to do, mm. uh, which is really a not good governing, in my opinion, because you cannot decide to do something before you know the consequences of it. Mm. However, it's a decision that we made. Well, British people made. Uh, mm -hmm. I myself am still an immigrant. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so this is a decision that British people made and the government needs to find solutions. Uh, however, um, from legal perspective, it is going to be very difficult to defend anything that is going to limit the right of Europeans living in the UK, especially those who've been here for more than five years. Because currently, uh, regulations are as follows. If you are European national exercising treaty rights, which means you are working here or you are a student, a self-sufficient person or self-employed, with minor conditions to that as well. Uh, so if you are all these things, either of these things actually, uh, then after five years, you uh, 
acquire automatically acquire a right to be here permanently and mm -hmm. be out of those immigration controls or mm -hmm. in any kind of controls. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is why those who have uh, acquired this permanent resident status, even if they have not applied for a document to certify this uh, mm -hmm. status, they are quite safe because, as I said, it's going to be an indispensable uh, position if they try to remove these people. Mm -hmm. Situation is different for those who have, who have uh, been here for less than five years. What will happen to these people is yet the great unknown. Uh, but, of course, there are legal arguments uh, from a lawyer's perspective, from, from human rights perspective. Um, it's going to be very difficult to argue that uh, people who have come here believing that uh, UK is part of uh, the European Union and they are coming here, they are allowed to stay here for as long as they want, mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult for the government to remove these people as well, even if they have not reached the five years. Mm -hmm. Because there is a thing called a doctrine, mm -hmm. legal doctrine, called uh, the legitimate expectation. Mm -hmm. yes. These people have arrived to the UK believing they are allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and projecting their lives according to the mm. rules of mm. the time that they've arrived to the UK. Mm -hmm. mm. And this is why there is a, this discussion about the break-off point. I mm. think every mm. one of us have now heard of that. Mm -hmm. What this break-off date uh, is going to be is probably they are going to choose one date after which whoever has arrived will not have this legitimate excuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought I can come here mm -hmm. and live mm -hmm. here yeah. mm -hmm. or yeah. work here or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is um, mm -hmm. the, <laughs> well, well, yeah, from the yeah. moment that we decided to, to exit. That could be one of the dates, isn't it? Exactly. No, I, probably, I, widely. No, I <laughs> probably think it's going to be a future date it's, to make it fair. Cause so it's it going to be, be a, a date I, I, after the announcement yeah, yes. is made. And I, I, I also it's likely to be uh, after the Article 50 is triggered. Mm. Yeah. Uh, European yeah. Union mm. is pushing for this date to be the actual date that Britain is leaving. Mm. The, well, leave, is officially leave, leaving. They officially yeah. will leave mm. the European Union. I, I, I mm. have co confidence in, in the UK mm. in terms of um, you know, making sure that the rights of people are protected. I have um, every confidence that they will do that. So I'm not even concerned about how they do it. Mm -hmm. But um, I, you know, like we, you said earlier on, the people voted. We mm -hmm. voted for yeah. this to happen. So I, we're, we're trusting our government now to take us through this and, and do it in the mm -hmm. right way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, what, I, so, out of curiosity, what do you think will be the implications for those Europeans who haven't come in and are going to come in? Will they then require? Um, it's possible that they will be under real immigration controls because mm -hmm. whatever is now, there are conditions for Europeans to live here. Mm -hmm. You cannot just come here and decide I want mm -hmm. to live here. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, you cannot have, and this is another media. Um, uh, Speculation. Lots of people think that Europeans come here and live off benefits. Mm, mm. Under the uh, European regulations, you cannot really do that. Mm -hmm. You are not exercising treaty rights if you are dependent on the host country's public purse. Right. You need to be self-sufficient. Uh, to be self-sufficient, uh, uh, if you are not working or you are, you are not self-employed, uh, self to be self-sufficient, you need to have enough money to support yourself mm -hmm. and you need to have a comprehensive sickness insurance. Mm -hmm. You cannot even rely on the NHS. So another misconception yes. there. Well, it's not, it's yeah, not really a misconception yeah. because I actually do work with the, pub with the public and I actually mm -hmm. do see um, a lot of Europeans come into the UK with no funds at all. And they come to us, they, they go to the local authority. Of course, there are things in place to stop them, um, but ultimately, social services pick up. They mm -hmm. pick up, they have to, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And you have charities picking up mm -hmm. and, and looking after these people and housing them and providing food for them, food vouchers and, you know, it's yeah. a total mess, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. May mm -hmm. I interject there? Yeah, yeah. The misconception is not about the fact that this happens, mm -hmm. but about the fact that this comes from the European Union. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, this is the enforcement mm -hmm. in, in the UK, Britain. Mm -hmm. in Britain, mm -hmm. of the uh, regulation, European mm -hmm. regulations. Mm -hmm. This is where it's lacking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agree with that. And I think mm -hmm. also, I think part of the reason why people voted to Brexit, for instance, was because 
being part of the European Union, also we felt that our borders were open mm. Mm. because it's not just Europe. Like when I think about the Europeans coming here, I don't actually have that perception that oh they're coming to take our benefits. They say, a lot of the time it's people from other countries beyond that that come into and then I think about things like terrorism I think about having people trying to come in like I said you know I was saying through the channel tunnel and it's those stories that you do hear that are publicized by the media and yes sometimes they are exaggerated that you do think you know what actually we don't feel protected because we're part of this union which we pay billions to be part of yeah. and then our borders are open and we've don't feel protected because we just feel like we are restricted to make our own laws. And then you go to countries like Switzerland and you think, actually, they're doing pretty all right. Everyone mm -hmm. seems to be, you don't hear anything about them. You know, of course, they've got their, their issues mm -hmm. like all countries do, but they seem to be OK, actually. You know, maybe we should go it alone. And I think that is what the perception was. It wasn't like, you know, especially in London, there are some people who unfortunately do have a perception about other cultures. There, are, There is racism, as there is in many countries. But I don't think it was a situation, we don't want to be part of it. You know, we are racist. We. I don't think it was that. I think it was like, you know what? We want to be protected. We want to make our own laws. We want to make our own decisions. Mm -hmm. And, you know... If we go under, we know we've gone under for our own decisions rather than going under because we're part of a union and we've all got to agree on something. I think that was kind of what the perception that, was. But that was a misperception because mm -hmm. a lot of immigration rules come from, or, or, or the, uh, the lack of enforcement of immigration rules mm -hmm. came from the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came to UK, and it was only uh, three years, roughly three years ago, I was shocked how permissive UK immigration exactly. laws yes. were. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I come from I a was European equally, country. Exactly. I was equally shocked. And you were equally shocked because yeah. you, you were entitled, like you said, you're entitled to healthcare. So, and now I feel that now the pressure is going to be on for the yes. British people to say, actually, and that for our government to say, actually, we will enforce these laws because it's the people that have stood up and said, actually, yeah. we want and to And the around. European Union has been a scapegoat, basically. Mm. Right. So I come from Romania. Uh, you would never have dreamed to enter Romania, even though it's a country that not too many people, I can't imagine, want to go to. to. <laughs> 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 no, it's, a, no, it's a actually a very, very nice country yeah. with not so uh, great uh, <laughs> media coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's very difficult to get there. Actually, I was an immigrant in that country as well. Mm -hmm. I moved through lots of jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. I moved through. Mm -hmm. And I know how difficult for me was to mm -hmm. get... Mm -hmm. there and how mm -hmm. easy it was uh, okay I came here as European so it's not a good uh, a comparison, uh, comparison. comparison. Yeah. Yeah. however mm -hmm. I work in immigration and I see uh, yeah. how easy it for even for those outside it's mm -hmm. becoming a lot more difficult now mm -hmm. but the UK especially previously it was the, the UK's own laws that allowed for the huge amount of people to come into yeah. this country. They were very tolerant. Yeah, whether yes. it's a good thing or a bad yes. thing, I actually think it was a good thing yeah. and it was something that Britain needed. Mm -hmm. However, to put it now on the European Union and say, well, well we couldn't control our borders because of European Union, mm -hmm. it's not only uh, not correct, but it's dis dishonest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we want to fix the future, to uh, we need to acknowledge this. Yeah, yeah. Now, responsibility. Yeah. We've yes. run out of time for this segment, but I just want to quickly ask this question. Now, in terms of British people who've migrated to other European countries, how will the Brex Brexit affect them? Uh, that, again, is announced, uh, a question for future. However, I do not uh, expect European countries to try and limit uh, their rights mm -hmm. uh, now because they are going to face similar kind of problems. They cannot, uh, these people have exercised treaty rights. Mm -hmm. They cannot say you need to go back now. They will face a lot of backlash, mm -hmm. legal and public. Yeah. So that's not... Thank you very much for coming mm -hmm. and answering Thank our you. questions. So if you're wondering how the Brexit will affect you as a European living in Britain or a British citizen living outside of Europe, I'm sure this segment has answered a lot of your questions. Now we're going to take a short break and after the break we'll be back with I'm a Legal Alien. <laughs> <laughs>